Hello and welcome to this brief presentation related to simple machines. We're going to consider two machine types, the screw thread and the screw jack. For each machine type we will calculate the mechanical advantage, MA, the velocity ratio, VR, and the efficiency, symbol eta. Here's a brief presentation overview. We commence with the introduction stating various screw thread terminology, illustrating the single start screw thread and how it is analyzed using the incline plane analogy. We then illustrate multiple screw threads and power threads. We define the terms mechanical advantage, MA, velocity ratio, VR, and efficiency, usually denoted by the Greek symbol lowercase eta. Next, we have some calculations related to screw threads. Example 1S requires us to calculate the efficiency of the screw thread. And exercise 1S for you to attempt requires us to calculate the velocity ratio and the maximum load that can be raised by the screw thread. Then we consider screw jacks. Example 1J. We have to calculate the effort required to be applied to the handle of a screw jack given stated parameters and exercise 1j for you to attempt at your own pace but we have to calculate the efficiency. The presentation concludes with some questions for you to attempt at your own pace. The examples and exercises show full work solutions but the questions are left for you to develop your own solutions in your own time. And here are the approximate start times related to the various sections contained within the presentation to hopefully aid your ease of access through the presentation. Let's consider some basic terminology. So what is a screw thread? The thread of a screw is the helical shape that forms around the cylinder of the screw, shown here. The thread converts rotational movement into linear movement and the threads can have variations in the following characteristics. For example, the shape of the thread, it can be V-shaped, shown here, square-shaped, shown here, or various other shapes. Variations can occur in the helix angle of the thread, that's the incline of the thread form, and variations in the pitch of the thread, that's the space between the crests of each thread. So between here and here, between here and here, that's the pitch. Each of these characteristics can have a significant impact on the performance of the screws and their associated applications. The continuation of our terminology, let's define the helix, the curve that results from drawing a straight line on a sheet of paper and then wrapping it around a cylinder or a cone is termed the helix. Helix denoted here, shown here, wrapped around our cylinder and here wrapped around our cone. So the screw thread is an example of a helix that's relevant to this presentation. Let's consider the purposes of screw threads. Essentially threads are used for two prime purposes. Firstly, power transmission so that's inducing rotational to linear motion and vice versa for example in a car jack or purpose two to provide for accurate location for example servo motor driven linear actuators as used in aircraft automobiles cnc machines robots and various manufacturing equipment these can be used to push or rotate parts with great precision. Let's consider a single start screw thread. The sketch here shows the single start screw thread effectively being unwrapped. So essentially from the diagram above, the development of the thread in effect forms an inclined plane. Here's the development of the helix forming the inclined plane. This horizontal distance here relates to the circumference of the cylinder in one revolution. This vertical height here is termed the lead of the helix. 
no angle alpha shown here is the angle of the inclined plane, angle of the helix. So the thread is formed by unwrapping the plane around the core of the screw in the form of the helix. Note for reference that threads are assumed to be single start unless otherwise stated. We'll consider multi-start threads later in the presentation. So let's consider the inclined plane. Here's a diagram of the development of the screw and the nut in this case. So we have a load labeled as symbol W here. This can be considered the load we're trying to raise. And we have the effort applied, symbol P here, but often the symbol E is used for effort when considering simple machines. And this is the horizontally applied force. This is essentially the pushing force up the incline. The right hand diagram shows more clearly the load applied to the incline plane. We have our thread unwrapped here. So again, we have the force here from the load that's being raised. And here's our effort, symbol P, pushing our load up the incline plane. Again, notice the angle of the incline is the helix angle of the thread. Let's consider now multiple screw threads. So in what's termed a single threaded screw, the number of starts, lowercase n, is equal to 1. So in this case, what's termed the lead of the thread, uppercase L, is equal to the pitch of the thread, lowercase p. So in other words, for a single start screw thread, in one revolution, the linear movement, or the lead, is equal to the pitch. If we consider a double threaded screw, now the number of starts, lowercase n, is equal to 2, we find now that for one revolution of the screw thread, the lead is twice the pitch, given by the formula here. Lead is equal to the number of starts multiplied by the pitch of the thread. And finally, for a treble threaded or three star screw, n is equal to three. So now the lead, the linear movement for one revolution of the thread, is three times the pitch. Multiple screw threads continued. So these are used when the pitch of a screw is required to be larger than is usual for a given diameter. However, as the pitch is larger, there will be less threads per unit length, thus the strength of the screw will reduce. To aid reduction in the loss of strength, the screw cut is made to be multi-threaded. So in other words, several threads are cut, each being parallel to each other and of the same pitch. I found this quite illustrative slide here showing multi-start screw threads. So on the left hand side here we have a single start thread. This is where the lead, capital L, is the same as the pitch, in our case P. Then we have our double start thread. Now the lead is twice the pitch. And you can see from the diagram, uh, the first thread cut is the red thread. And it has a larger pitch on the double start thread than it does on the single start thread. So 180 degrees around from the red thread, the blue thread is cut. So now we have the same pitch on the double start thread as we have on the single start thread. But we've achieved that by cutting these two threads. So now one revolution of the screw thread will move a linear distance twice the pitch and of course for the triple start thread the lead is now three times the pitch and again the diagram is quite illustrative here it shows the red thread cut now it have three times the pitch of the standard single thread on the left hand side here so with, within the red thread we now cut the blue and the green threads so we have three threads commencing 120 degrees apart on the thread form. So now one revolution of the three start thread moves a linear distance three times the pitch. I thought that was quite an illustrative diagram using different colour threads to show the effect of multiple starts. Let's consider power threads. 
So power screw thread applications can include Lay's lead screws we find in the workshops or on various types of machinery or the screw used in a car lifting jack as well as other applications such as robotics etc. And these threads transform rotary motion into substantial linear motion or vice versa. The standard isometric 60 degree thread form shown here is not suitable for such power screw applications as the power applications transform motion and thus must have high efficiency. The square thread form shown here at the top of the slide offers the best efficiency for a power thread but generally manufacturing a perfectly square thread form is impractical. The Acme thread form shown here top of the slide is the best compromise between efficiency, ease of manufacture, assembly and wear. There is what's termed a buttress thread form and that's efficient at raising loads but inefficient at lowering loads. The buttress thread form is outlined here. The fly press is a typical application of a power thread form. These used to be found in assembly areas, in tool rooms, etc. And they are multi start thread forms used to provide quick vertical movement for a minimum rotational movement. They tended towards a square thread form as that's used to provide significant force, for example, pressing operations. So minimum rotational movement of this operating arm would provide significant linear movement of this multi-start screw thread here. And they're often used for pressing applications. For example, pressing small bearings into bearing housings. Let's now consider some definitions of machines, mechanical advantage and velocity ratio. So a machine is defined as a device that can change the magnitude and or line of action of a force. For example, a hoist here raising a load when an effort is applied. Or the pulley system here raising a load given an effort applied. Or the screw jack raising a load for an applied effort. So the effort is considered the input force to the machine and the load is essentially the output force from the machine. Let's consider mechanical advantage, MA, often termed the force ratio. So by using a lifting machine, an advantage is obtained. A mechanical advantage occurs when lifting a large load with a small effort. The mechanical advantage is defined as the ratio of load to effort. So MA is equal to load divided by effort. An MA is dimension S because using SI units, the load is measured in newtons and the effort is measured in newtons. And just for reference to the mental hook, when I was a student, we remembered the mechanical advantage formula from the mnemonic male, MA is load divided by effort. Velocity ratio, VR, sometimes referred to as the movement ratio, VR is calculated from the machine's dimensions. So the basic definition for velocity ratio, VR is equal to the distance moved by the effort divided by the distance moved by the load. And again, this is a dimensionless value. It should be noted that the method of calculating VR is dependent on the machine type. So you'll see for the two types of simple machine we're considering here, the screw thread and the screw jack, we will define the respective VRs on the following slides. Just note that for ideal machines, these are 100% efficient machines, the mechanical advantage is equal to the velocity ratio. However, for non-ideal machines, that's machines that are less than 100% efficient due to friction losses, the efficiency equation is defined as follows. Efficiency, usually symbol eta, from our Greek symbols, 
and that's equal to the MA divided by the VR. So for non-ideal machines, the mechanical advantage is always less than the velocity ratio. So that's an overview of the definitions and the formulae we're going to use now to solve some problems involving in screw threads and screw jacks. Let's consider the inclined planes of a screw thread. So as we stated previously, pitch P is the amount the screw is raised in one rotation, one revolution. Diameter D is the diameter of the cylinder on which the thread is wound. For the horizontal rotation of pi d, that's the circumference of the thread, the load is raised through height p here, the pitch. So from our generic formula for velocity ratio, that's the distance moved by the effort, pi d, that's the circumference in one revolution, divided by the distance moved by the load, that's the vertical height. And that will be the number of starts multiplied by the pitch of the thread. Just note for reference, we always assume the number of starts, lowercase n, is 1, unless we're told otherwise. Okay. So there's our formula for velocity ratio for a screw thread. Let's consider example 1s. A fly press has a square screw thread, 0.1 meters diameter, and 10 millimeters pitch. We've got to find the efficiency of the screw thread. If a 20 newton effort raises a load of 0.3 kilonewtons. So as always, extract information from the question. We need to be consistent with our dimensions. So from the information given in the question, I converted the diameter from meters to millimeters. Capital D here is 100 millimeters and the pitch is 10 millimeters. The effort applied, symbol capital E here is 20 newtons. And the load that's raised is 0.3 kilonewtons, so load labelled W here is 300 newtons. The question doesn't state a number of starts, so we will assume that the number of starts is 1. So lowercase n is 1 in this case. That's the assumption made. So firstly, we're going to calculate the velocity ratio VR. We know that's pi multiplied by the diameter divided by the number of starts multiplied by the pitch. Inserting our values, the velocity ratio is 10 pi, or in decimal, that's approximately 31.42. Next, we calculate the mechanical advantage. That's load W, 300 newtons, divided by the effort applied, 20 newtons. So MA is 15. And finally, to calculate the efficiency, symbol eta, that's simply MA divided by VR. So the efficiency is 1.5 divided by pi, or in decimal, that's approximately 0.477, or 47.7%. Here's exercise 1S for you to attempt. A three-start fly press has a square screw thread of 12 centimeters diameter and 25 millimeter pitch. We've got to find the velocity ratio. If the thread is 45% efficient, we have to determine the maximum load that can be raised for an applied effort of 50 newtons. The answer for velocity ratio shown here and for the maximum load shown here to one decimal place. I would encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt exercise 1S, but I'll show the full work solution on the following slides. Exercise 1S, here's the beginning of the solution. Note this is a three-star square thread. So the lead, that's the vertical movement in this case, will be three times the pitch of the thread. So the number of starts, N is equal to three. And exercise 1S solution continued. And using the efficiency formula, eta is equal to MA divided by VR. We can simply rearrange the equation to find MA. That's efficiency multiplied by VR. That allows us to calculate the MA, 0.72 pi or approximately 2.262. And then finally, we can calculate the load W, knowing the MA formula is load divided by the effort. 
then load W is MA multiplied by the effort. In certain values, W is 113.1 newtons. That's to one decimal place. Let's consider the screw jack. The sketch on the right hand side shows a simple lifting machine based on a screw. The load shown here being raised W is moved vertically by the pitch, lowercase p, of the thread when the effort, shown here, symbol E, is moved through one complete circle. In other words, that's a distance of 2 pi r, that's the circumference. Note that r is the radius or the length of the handle. So to calculate the velocity ratio, vr, that's the distance moved by the effort, the 2 pi r, divided by the vertical distance moved by the load here, which is the number of starts on the thread multiplied by the pitch of the thread. So there's our VR formula for the screw jack. Example 1J, a two start screw jack has a pitch of six millimeters and a handle of radius 60 centimeters. We're asked to determine the effort to be applied to the handle if the screw jack is to raise a mass of 200 kilograms, the efficiency can be taken as 70%. So as always with these problems, we firstly extract all the information that's given. Just notice that the radius of the handle has been converted to millimeters because the pitch is in millimeters here. And also the mass given is 200 kilograms has to be converted to a weight force by multiplying by gravitational acceleration. And of course, the 70% efficiency is 0.7 in decimal. So firstly here, I've calculated the velocity ratio using the formula 2 pi r divided by np. So vr evaluates to 100 pi, or approximately 312.2. From the efficiency formula, equal to the mechanical advantage divided by the velocity ratio, we can simply rearrange the mechanical advantage. That's the efficiency multiplied by the velocity ratio and that evaluates to 70 pi or approximately 219.9 and no mechanical advantage is the load divided by the effort again we can rearrange for the effort it's the load divided by ma so the effort calculates to be 8.92 newtons so two decimal places here's exercise 1j for you to attempt a screw jack used to support work on a machine tool has a square thread of 6.25 mm pitch. Effort is applied to the handle at a radius of 125 mm. It is found that an effort of 9 newtons is required to raise a load of 36.7 kilograms. We've got to determine the efficiency of the screw jack. This is stated in the bracket here, to one decimal place. I would encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt exercise 1J, but the full work solution is shown on the following slides. Exercise 1J, here's the beginning of the solution. I can let you review this at your own pace, but again, as always, let's extract the information that's given in the question. Notice that the load raised W has been converted from kilograms into Newtons, that's multiplied by 9.81 of course, and no number of starts were stated in the question, so we assume that n is equal to 1 in this case. So firstly, we've calculated the velocity ratio, given the information in the question, shown here, the exact value and the approximate decimal value. An exercise 1j, solution continued. Next, I've calculated the Mechanical advantage, I calculated the load on the previous slide. We were given the effort in the question. So I can find the MA. Then knowing the MA and the VR, I can calculate the efficiency, which is equal to MA divided by VR. So the efficiency is 1 upon pi. It's approximately 0.3183, which is approximately 31.8% to one decimal place. I'm now going to show you some tutorial questions for you to attempt and generate your own solutions. So here's question one. We've got to calculate the effort to be applied. 
the answer is shown in the bracket here. Question two. In this case, we've got to find the velocity ratio, the mechanical advantage, and the effort required to raise the load. Here's question three. Got to calculate the velocity ratio, mechanical advantage, and the effort applied to raise the load. Question four, for you to attempt to calculate the effort that's shown in the bracket. Question five, have to find the efficiency of the screw thread shown here. And finally, question six, have to determine the efficiency shown here. Note that there's a hint in the question. Here's the bibliography used to help generate this presentation, which I hope has been of some interest to you. And as always, thank you for viewing.